Oh wow, two people already. Hi. <laughs> Love it, having started. Awesome. I'm just gonna wait for a few people to come through. I've got this on um, the front camera so I can control it because I have no cameraman today, unfortunately. I'm gonna readjust it so that it's aiming at my counter so I can demonstrate. Two seconds. So, can we zoom in? Yes, we can. Oh, I love that. All right. First of all, I'd just like to thank the people who did um, write what they would like to see in the live streams. It really makes my job a lot easier because at least I know I'm doing something that you guys are interested in. Um, but today we'll be doing some fondant butterflies and we'll be using some fondant plunger cutters to do this. So these are what the plunger cutters look like. Uh, this brand is Kitchen Craft, set of three butterfly plunger cutters. And I'm going to be using the smallest one. I like these plunger cutters because they do have that pattern on the inside, if you can see there. It's um, the lines on the inside, it's embossed. So it gives your butterfly a little bit more of life. For this particular project, I am using Bakehouse fondant. And I've tinted it yellow with some Chef Master gel food colour. So fondant has been airtightly wrapped and I'm just going to knead it back to a nice workable consistency. So the warmth from your hands should help that to happen. Hi! <laughs> I can kind of read your comments from here more or less, which is great because I can take some questions later as well. So I'm just going to knead that till about it's a bit soft and easy to work with. I have my cornstarch. If you are living in humid conditions where it's really warm, um, cornstarch is a great medium to use as a non-stick. Uh, otherwise, in colder temperatures, if your fondant is getting a bit hard or it's creating um, elephant skin, try using vegetable shortening instead. So I'm just rolling it out. And it's about two millimeters in thickness. I don't want it to be too, too thin or too thick either. I take my plunger cutter, the smaller size, I'm going to press it down firmly, give it a good circle on my countertop. Let's just make sure that there's no little frilly pieces on the edge of our butterfly. I'm also going to press down at this point to emboss with those pretty lines, take it off, and you can see no uh, frilly sort of edges because we did that movement. Plunge it out, and we have our pretty little butterfly. So it doesn't stop here. Now we have to shape it. Um, so to shape it, actually I'm going to cut out just a few more. So press down, swirly swirly, emboss, and lock. Now to shape your butterflies, uh, what you would need to do is find something with a corner that you can lay them on. So right now they're flexible and they're very soft. Oh, I just lost all my butterflies. And um, so they won't hold shape very well. So what I have here is, <laughs> what was this? I think this was Glad Wrap. And I just cut off the corner from the Glad Wrap. These ones here I made last night and I let them dry overnight. And you can see how much more realistic that looks and it has that kind of shape. Really awesome. So to do that, grab your fresh butterflies, give them a bit of a bend where you want them to bend and aim that bend towards the inner corner. And then just allow them to rest like this, even for a few hours. The thinner your fondant is, the quicker they will dry out. But granted, the thinner your fondant is, the more fragile they are as well. So whether or not they break on your cake or absorb um, moisture from your fridge a lot easier is also dependent on how thick you cut them. So that's our butterflies. I'm going to leave these ones in this end so I know which are fresh. These are all dry. We can go ahead and decorate the cake with it. So. I'm going to readjust this camera so you guys can get a better picture of the decorating process. All right, let's see. Let's bring this down and bring it up. Ooh, I think that is a pretty good angle right there. Take the chair out of the way. And to decorate this today, I'm doing like an ombre effect. So I've got some buttercream. This is a hybrid buttercream. 
Uh, I'll list it in the description box once this live stream is live. Um, well, once this live stream is saved on my channel. And it's a bit cold today. Buttercream does tend to harden at room temperature if you leave it for a bit. So I'm going to give it a stir to re, re soften it out. This is neon pink that I've used. I've barely used a quarter of a drop to get it that shade of pink. And this was one full um, drop of neon pink by Chef Master. Great. That's nice and smooth. I'm going to grab my little spatula. This, I believe, is an eight centimeter spatula, four and a half inches, I think that is. And I, whenever I work with any cake that is four in, um, five inches or below, I use this spatula here. It's just a lot easier to control. So I'm starting at the top, just a pop of buttercream, and I'm moving it out to the sides. I'm gonna angle my spatula, let it go around until it's nice and flat. And because I'm using three different colors, I'm going to kind of divide the cake in three different sections. So I want the white at the top, And just back and forth motions as I turn my turntable. This is a five inch cake, by the way. Okay, so that's our first layer of color. Then I'm gonna go a little bit lighter into my um, light pink color. And I'm aiming it right in the center of the cake. And working with less on your spatula gives you more control rather than trying to put a whole heap on at once. And then I'm going into my darkest color. So that was a bit much for my spatula. And that's going right at the bottom. My white needs to be a little bit thicker, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more up top again. And then grab a frosting scraper. I actually have my frosting comb that I'm gonna be using at the end, and it has a flat side that you can actually use as a scraper. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that down. And these can be found on my website, rosiesdesertspot.com. I have a few different um, comb options and styles you can go with. So I'm going around to smooth it down just to take away any pockets. How cool is that? I love it on your scraper when you get that ombre kind of effect. Now this one here I'm going to offset into my darkest colour because if you mix it in, it won't make a difference. If you pop that into your white colour, you now have two um, white buttercreams, uh, sorry, two pink buttercreams, you don't want that. So you can still re reuse that. Here's the mini scallop that I've got here. And just for added interest, I'm going to go ahead and emboss, I guess, the side of my cake with this. And it's sitting flat with my cake board as I go around. And that makes sure that the pattern is consistent all over the cake. Okay, once you're more or less happy with the effect, grab it and go around one full spin. Make sure that that looks okay. And scrape it off as you work and then clean up the very top edge. Just bring that with the frosting to the center of your cake. Okay, I would recommend popping your um, butterflies on your cake straight away. Don't let your cake set sit because it's still sticky. So your, fun, um, yeah, your butterflies will stick to your cake really easily. Otherwise, if you do want to set it in the fridge, that's not a problem either. 
you just need a piping bag of buttercream and you just have to put some buttercream behind your butterfly before you put it onto your cake. Now find the front of your cake. That there that you see, that little line, that is the back of my cake now. So my front would be, mm, I'm gonna say about there. And then I'm just gonna pop them traveling up the cake. So just give them a little press in. And, oops, that's upside down. Just arrange them however you like. You can make larger ones, smaller ones. Um, I'm actually gonna pop some edible beads on here as well for added interest. But definitely do not skip out on um, the shaping, on leaving them to dry overnight in that curve. Gives them a whole new look. Let's see, how's that going? Just like that. And I'm gonna add some edible pearls, I'll be right back. I've always got my gold ones handy. I don't know what it is about gold, but I just love it. So, I'm just gonna stick those randomly here and there. Now, I've had a few people asking about um, if I can do a lace fondant tutorial uh, for live stream. Definitely can. Uh, problem is, I don't have any lace molds for fondant right now. Uh, so I do have to go out and buy some. And so for our next tutorial, I'll definitely be able to show you guys how to use fondant with lace molds. Well, fondant lace molds anyway. You can probably use them with regular lace molds that you're meant to have um, liquid lace for, but you'll just get an embossed effect. You won't actually get the lace out of fondant, if you know what I mean. So yeah, that is our super quick and easy fondant butterfly cake. I'm just going to take some questions now if you guys have any. I feel like I'm missing something. That's okay. It'll come to me when the live stream's over. Just knowing my luck. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to sit down with you guys now. It's not going in portrait. All right, I think I have to stay like this now. Hello from Chicago. Oops, how did it disappear? Okay. Sorry guys, I'm really trying here. Oh, hey Mark from Epic Confections. Awesome dude, check out his channel, he's amazing. Oh my God, there's no comments. Why can't I see comments? Hello from Rochester, New York. Hi, teenies. Cakes. Ah, <laughs> oh, beautiful. Here we go. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, guys. Hello. All right. Lots of hellos. Greetings, everybody. We have Bushra Ahmed asking, do you use Italian buttercream or American buttercream for your cakes? Uh, so what you see here today is American buttercream, but I use half butter and half shortening. Um, it's just a lot more stable, a lot paler, a lot creamier, a lot nicer on the tongue if you have a mixture of those two. So thank you for your question. Um, Katz Keat says, so glad to see it's not just me that ends up wearing what I'm making. <laughs> Love it. I used to work at um, a bakery and I was known to be the person who would walk in with a totally clean apron and walk out. You could probably take off the apron pop it next to you and it could stand independently on its own for how much icing sugar and mixture was on it. Um, now I think about it, probably not very hygienic. So yes, I'm incredibly messy. It's just, I can't help it. Um, Kias Lucky Golup asks, hello, don't, don't you provide box, books on fondant training? Sorry, my eyes. Do you provide books on fondant training? I don't provide books, but I do have some tutorials available for you guys for free um, and also over on my video um, Vimeo page, like full uh, two hour course on fondant. If you guys are interested, uh, there is video tutorials on that. And it's going to take maybe one more question. 
Oh, thanks, guys. You're awesome. Uh -huh. Kai the Wolf asks, Yummy, I'm eating soup and I want Rosie's dessert. <laughs> Love it. Uh, okay, well, oh, that is the top. Okay, there are no more questions. Ah, uh, thank you guys for watching. So, there is a fondant tutorial for butterflies, and I'll see you guys again in a fortnight's time for our next live stream. So, thank you very much for being here with me this morning. I hope it's not odd hours where you are. Um, but if it is, sweet dreams and have a great day. Bye, guys. Oops. Oh.